Welcome to the Old Time Radio Superman Show. This is your host, Adam Graham, coming to you from Boise, Idaho. Well, last time, uh, Clark Kent let Pete Barnaby believe that Kent was willing just to say, regarding the mutiny, ah, it was just mutiny. No big deal. There's no reason to turn them in in at port. Uh, But Clark Kent is just laying the trap to Barnaby. Find out what it's all about. So, he's continuing on the voyage, and we're going to find out what's going to happen next. Before we uh, get started with the show, I want to encourage you to go to Laser and Sword magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us. Thursday, we'll have a new exciting chapter in the Rise of the Judge series, as they get closer and closer to discovering what the unknown mission is. Uh, Check out... uh, Rise of the Judge at Laser and Sword Magazine, lasersword.adamsweb.us. Also check out our store, lulu.com slash lasersword. Again, I encourage you to cast your vote for us at Podcast Alley. And if you got any comments on the show, feel free to email me, adam at adamsweb.us. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. The Last of the Clipper Ships, Part 11. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look, it's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, star reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle against crime and injustice. Mystery and thrilling adventure have filled the lives of Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen on their cruise around the world aboard the last of the clipper ships, the Clara M., In our last episode, we heard how, following a tremendous storm, during which the captain was badly injured, the crew mutinied under the leadership of a sailor named Limey. Only after they had completely taken the ship did Superman step in and save the situation. As our last episode ended, we heard how Teak Barnaby, peg-legged first mate aboard the Clara M, persuaded Clark Kent not to have the men thrown into irons. Our scene is now the crew's quarters of the ship, where Teak Barnaby is talking to the men. Listen. Hold. Every last one of you. And the biggest fool of all is Limey there. The man that persuaded you to mutiny. These men and myself are scared of what's going to happen, that's all. Every man jack of us is wanted by the authorities, you know that. What's going to happen when one of the officers on board the San Jose spots us, eh? You're going to all keep out of sight as much as possible. How can we keep out of sight? The time comes to transfer the old man to the stretch, eh? I can just see it in my mind's eye. A couple of the lads helping to get the captain down into the motor launch they'll send over. One of the officers in that launch saying sudden like, Oh, for a moment, good fella. Ain't I seen you somewhere before? Devil take me. I don't see you. You don't see. Well, I do. What happens after that is an investigation, that's what. An investigation of every man aboard this here ship. There'll be no investigation while I'm master here. Yeah, that's what you say. You don't believe me, eh? No, I don't. Well, then, let me remind you of one thing. When I paid you men to sign on here, I promised you that no harm would come to you. And so far, I've kept my word. You know what Mr. Kent wanted to do with you men? He wanted to turn you over to the offices of the San Jose and have the Clara M escorted into Caracas. You all know what that would mean. An investigation. That's you what and your investigation. It would mean prison. Prison for the rest of your natural lives. And maybe hanging for some of you. I tell you, we ain't going to expose ourselves by letting the officers aboard the San Jose spot. I, I said I'd take care of that. That's what you say. I've got a job to do. And you've all been paid to help me do it. You'll take the ship when I give the word, and no sooner. Do I make my meaning clear? And don't forget it, neither. Now, as I was saying... Wait a minute. What is it? Quiet, quiet. Someone listening at the door. Keep talking. I'll throw this door open sudden, Mike, and we'll find out who it is. Gosh! Well, Jim. Jim, lad. <laughs> Come to pay us a visit, did you? Why, yes, Mr. Barnaby. I, I thought I'd drop in for, for a talk. Right kind of you, lad. But why didn't you walk right in, lad? Afraid to break in on our conversation, were you? Wait, no. That is, I just got here. I I didn't even know you were talking to the men. Of course, there wouldn't be no reason why you shouldn't break in on us. 
Now, would they? No, sir, they wouldn't. Of course not. And, uh, <laughs> suppose you did overhear a word or two. There'd be no reason to go and, uh, tell Mr. Kent. Now, would they? No, sir. They wouldn't. Uh, Irish, hey, sir. Hand me that knife and that whetstone. Yeah, sure, then, Mr. Barnaby, you'd Hand me that me. knife, bless you, and that sharpener's stone. What, what are you going to do, Mr. Barnaby? Just going to sharpen this knife, lad. <laughs> Look at that blade, lad. Nice and long and sharp. It'll be real sharp when I get done with it. Why? Why are you sharpening it? Always got to sharpen a knife before you use it, Jim. It uh, cuts cleaner. Does its work quicker. I guess I'll be getting up on deck now. Now, now, don't go. Don't go. Not yet a while, lad. Stay and talk with me and the boy. That's what you... <laughs> Come down here for, didn't you? Yes, but I... There, there, there. there she's nice and sharp now. <laughs> Beautiful knife, ain't she? Just uh, feel the edge of it. Oh, thanks. I... Well, I guess she's about ready to do the job I planned for her. So then... Mr. Barnaby, listen. I won't say anything about what I heard on my word of honor. I won't. I'll forget everything honest. Honest, I will. Now, now, lad. What's to get excited about? Can't old Teak Barnaby set about chopping a knife to whittle himself a new leg without you getting excited? Is that what you're going to use the knife for? Well, what else would I use it for, lad? I didn't know. My wooden leg uh, was bad splintered, you know. I'm just able to get around on it. It won't last much longer. Got to whittle myself a new one. Of course, sir. A knife can be put to other uses, too. For instance, I remember once when I sailed in a good ship, Sea Wolf, one of the crew uh, talked a little too much. And one morning they found... Huh? Well, that must be the San Jose. He arrived at St. Captain off at last. Run along, lad, and tell Mr. Kent I'll be on deck in short order. And, uh, that's all you tell him. Understand? Aye, sir. Aye. Climbing. Irish, on deck. I'll be wanting you two to lower the captain overside. We'll be spotted, that's what. And that's what you're open to. Keep your faces turned and no one will question you. Get going. Hey, Mr. Barnaby, the lad, do you think he'll talk about where he overheard here? Have no fear. He'll do no talking. I'll see to that. Well, Senor Kent, your capitan is safely aboard our launch, so we shall be leaving you. You are sure there is nothing further we can do for you? Oh, we're indebted to you as it is, Senor Alviro. Tell your captain for me how sorry we are to have given him this trouble. Oh, no trouble. The courtesy of the sea, Senor Kent. Uh, 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 Senor Barnaby. Yeah, yeah, Senor. Uh, those two men of yours who assisted in putting your capitan aboard the launch. One of them I seem to have seen somewhere. Uh, could I have a word with him, please? Well, uh, Which uh, one do you mean, Senor Alvaro? Uh, that one there. Oh, Limey. Oh, Mr. Kent, Limey's got a good deal to do below deck. Oh, this I... will take but a moment, Mr. Barnaby. Is anything wrong, Senor Alvaro? Uh, Senor Kent, uh, it's just that... Um, no, no, I, I must be mistaken. Huh? I just thought for a moment... Uh, yes? Okay, do not worry about it. I was wrong. And the quicker we get your capitan aboard the San Jose, the better. So I shall be off. Adios, Senor Kent. Goodbye. And again, thank you for all you've done. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Muchas gracias. Well, he's overside, Mr. Kent. We'll be getting underway. Very good, Captain Barnaby. Where's she? Where's she? Thanks for the main Jim! Oh, Jimmy! Yes, Mr. Kent? What's wrong with you? What's wrong? Why, nothing, sir. Oh, you can't fool me, Jim. There's something on your mind. During the entire time, Senor Alviro from the San Jose was aboard, you kept in the background, sort of looking as if, well, as if you wanted to say something and didn't dare. Did I? You sure there's nothing wrong? No. Honest, not a thing. 
Well, when you make up your mind to tell me what it is, let me know. But, Mr. Kent, I tell you... Jim, I know you too well to be fooled. You're worried about something. Something you feel you can't talk to me about. Well, if you don't want to tell me, well, that's all right. Just remember, though, that I'm ready to help you any time I can. Gosh, Mr. Kent, it isn't that I don't want to tell you, but Well, I... then why don't you well, tell me? Well, we're on the way, Mr. Kent. Well, looks like you and the lad are having a little heart-to-heart talk. No, on the contrary, Barnaby. Jimmy here refuses to tell me what's on his mind. Mm, something uh, worrying the lad? I'm afraid so. Well, yeah. Maybe it's something he'd rather keep to himself. Hey, lad? What? Yes. Yes, Mr. Barnaby. Well, after all, Mr. Kent, a secret's a secret. Hey, lad? <laughs> oh, I, I didn't mean to pry. If I know Jimmy, he'll tell me what's on his mind in good time. Oh, he will, eh? Well, what do you say to that, lad? Oh, no. I mean, that well, is... lad, you're all messed up. <laughs> Here, now, we'll take your mind off your troubles. Let old Teach show you a new trick. Here, now, let's see. Uh, uh, there we are. A little matchbox. A little wooden matchbox. What are you giving it to me for? Well, you just take it over near the deck house there. Go along now, and I'll show you a trick. Okay, but I wish I knew what you're going to do. What are you going to do, Barnaby? Just a harmless little trick. All right, lad. Just hold the matchbox up now. Hey, okay. That's right. Now, then... Part of me, that night! Uh. How's that, eh? <laughs> Clipped the matchbox out of the lad's hand and pinned it to the wall with me knife. Don't ever do that again, Barnaby. Uh, just a little trick, Mr. Kent. A harmless little trick. Trick or not, you might have hit Jimmy with that knife. Accidents happen. Not with old Teak Barnaby. I never hurt no one by accident yet. No, sir. Never yet hurt no one by accident. Well, there's no mistaking Teak Barnaby's meaning. Jimmy's in a pretty bad spot. What would you do? Would you tell Clark Kent what you overheard in the crew's quarters? Well, be sure to hear the next episode in this thrilling adventure of the sea with Superman. Tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up to the sky. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Wow. Oh, P. Barnaby has taken a sudden turn. Uh, You know, it was kind of an innocuous, uh, um, not totally innocuous, but somewhat of a long John Silver character through the first ten parts. This part, I think he's got to have the sound of the most creeping, menacing villain uh, in the whole series. I ain't never heard no one by accident yet. Ooh. Kind of makes your skin crawl a little bit here. Um, but um, probably the best thing is, is to see if he can, uh, for Jimmy Olsen, is to see if he can get alone with Clark Kent uh, before Barnaby uh, does something a bit more uh, permanently harmful. So, uh, join, and I gotta say, I gotta say, um, usually by about this is we've had enough for what in the middle of the 1940 series would be almost two complete story arcs. We're into part 11, and I still don't know what exactly is going on here. But maybe we'll get some more clues next week um, when we return to this to this exciting tale of the last of the Clipper ships. For now. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.